When I was younger, we visited my dad's family in Costa Rica for the first time. I was not ready for how different it would be. Never mind the endless waiting for the airplane stuff. Never mind the excitement and importance that I felt as a young kid traveling to a different country. All of those things were really big deals. But I learned that living in a different country was actually a different life. To begin with, the house was very different than what we lived in back in the U.S. It was very open. The windows had screens on them rather than actual glass. I don't know why we had screens on the windows because the door was always open. And that would explain the mosquito nets on the beds. I found those nets to be very helpful in keeping the bugs off me at night, though in truth, I imagined that there would be no bugs if the door was not always open. But no matter, I actually slept quite well at night considering all the noise. It was not city noise. We were right near the beach in a pretty remote area on the southern Caribbean side of the country. These were animal noises. At first, I was constantly going outside to see what was making all that noise. And being that it was nighttime, I couldn't see anything anyway. But I did eventually find those sounds extremely soothing. I slept like a baby. Another difference was that it seemed like people got up at dawn. And that might be because people got up at dawn. And we went to bed around 8 o'clock. And there was no TV time. And that was fine because we were busy and had no time for TV. We spent time on the beach. We went surfing. We went hiking. We went to visit my Aunt Bibi. Aunt Bibi apparently woke up before dawn. And that was like around 4 in the morning. Strangely, I didn't miss the TV at all. At my grandparents' house, we ate all of our meals together. Every single one. We sat down and talked and ate. And the meals lasted a long time. Lunch was like three hours long. And at first I couldn't imagine why. I mean, what could everybody have to talk about? But somehow, we all had lots to share with each other. It was surprising. I started to really like the long meals. At home, we have a lot of different choices regarding food. That was not so much the case at my grandparents' house. And there was lots of food, and it was definitely different from what we ate at home. We had galopinto with just about every meal. I finally stopped eating it because I was so tired of beans and rice. We ate patacones, which are made from plantains, and those were delicious. We had a lot of yuca, which is kind of like potatoes. We also had seafood. Everything was really fresh. I can't explain it. And lots of weird fruits. It was like every other tree had some strange fruit growing from it. They had names like maracua and bidiba, guanabana, mamones, guava, and amores en la bochita. There were also things that I recognized like bananas, pineapples, papayas, and mangoes. My grandmother made fresh juice every day. The fruits were my favorite foods in Costa Rica once I got used to the weirdness of some of them. It was just that they were growing everywhere. On the other hand, apples were expensive. I thought, that was strange. In a grocery store back home, weird tropical fruits were always very expensive. Needless to say, I ate a ton of fruit and was very regular. Another big difference was the culture of the people. Everyone talked to each other, no matter if they knew me or not, and they talked in Spanish. But it was not the Spanish that I spoke at home. This was very different and really fast. As soon as people found out that I knew some Spanish, they spoke so fast and so much, I always had to ask them to speak slower and repeat themselves. I imagine this must be what it's like for people who are visiting the U.S. who either know very little English or no English. It must be confusing for them as it was for me. I also noticed People had different social rules. Back home, when we were going to visit with someone, we usually made plans or at least called to make sure it was a good time. But down here, people would just show up. No invitation, phone call, or anything. And they would just walk in, hence the door being always open. It was not just open to let the bugs in, but also noisy neighbors and 
anyone else who felt like stopping by. I met a lot of my grandparents' friends and my Costa Rican cousins who live nearby, and even a few of my dad's friends from when he was growing up. And at first, it was annoying. People just appearing all the time. But eventually I liked it. It was less formal. And if people could just come over, I could just go and visit them. And I did. I even met a surf instructor who lived by and helped me to surf better. And all I had to do was ask her for help. She told me what to do and that was it. No appointment. She didn't even ask for money. I definitely was liking it more and more every day. The people down there were also a lot more relaxed about time, I noticed. While getting ready to go out for dinner with Grandpa Ernesto's brother Luis's family, Mom made sure that we were all ready to go at the appointed time. That was what we did any time we were going anywhere at home. But we must have waited at the restaurant for Luis and his family for an hour. My sister Ernesto and I were getting annoyed and hungry. Mom explained that uh, things are more laid back down here. Okay, but what did that have to do with being on time? Imagine a little kid my age thinking that. We learned that whenever someone made plans to meet at a certain time, what they typically meant was, yeah, around that time. Or sometime after that time. But I ended up liking that because as kids, we didn't have to stop what we were doing right away to go somewhere for dinner or lunch or anything else. This rule, or lack thereof, was definitely more kid-friendly. I also liked walking all the time. That was a big difference from back home. Back home, wherever we go, we almost always drive. But down in Costa Rica, we walked almost everywhere. It wasn't that everything was nearby, pretty much the opposite. But we walked everywhere, even into town. Grandpa Ernesto said that it was because gas is expensive and pollutes, so they drive only when necessary. He also said that walking is better because you can see more and it gives people more time to talk. That made sense, and I actually really liked it. I did always watch what was going on whenever I walked anywhere down there because there was so much going on. I would have missed a lot if every time we went somewhere we had driven. There were so many new experiences that I had that first time we visited Costa Rica. I learned that visiting another country was more than just going to another place. It was visiting another people and living their customs and ways of life. And as odd as I thought those differences were when I was a little kid, I learned to love them and enjoyed them even more as I grew up whenever I went back. It also gave me a valuable lesson about my own home as well. I learned that our way of life is not the only way. Thank you for watching. Please click on my right to subscribe if you like the video. And don't forget to click on the bell icon when you subscribe so that you can be notified when we upload a new video. Watch more videos on the left, including our playlist. And thank you again.